Hello everyone, my name is Bleached Area, and thank you so much for joining me today. As I've mentioned in my DSBM video, I've taken up an interest in finding music that people consider to be disturbing. It's kind of an interesting concept to me because the fact that some people can make something that's just so, like, scary or creepy or just messed up in some way, that it makes you so uncomfortable to the point where it even makes it difficult to sleep at night. And over time doing more research, I've been able to find a whole plethora of different music that people think is disturbing. I even had a go at making my own iceberg chart for disturbing songs. However, instead of going over each one one by one very briefly, I figured why not have a more in-depth discussion about each one of them and maybe even talk about some of the history around the song. So for this disturbing song dissection, I want to talk about one of the most memorable songs from this list, and that is Frankie Teardrop by Suicide. Frankie Teardrop 20 year old Frankie First off, I want to do a bit of history about the band. Suicide is a duo created by vocalist Alan Vega and instrumentalist Martin Rev. Their style of music is mostly described as electronic, synth-punk, avant-garde type music. During their early career, they were among the first groups to call themselves punk music, and they were a part of Lower Manhattan's underground music scene, doing shows with groups like the New York Dolls and The Fast, who are now known as Man to Man. Vega and Rev were very interesting, not just for their music, but also in the way that they presented themselves, which was described as artsy street thug. And Vega even wore a motorcycle chain on stage, which is something that he was notorious for. They weren't exactly liked in their scene, because they would constantly get booed as soon as they came on stage, because people just didn't like the way they dressed and people didn't really generally like their music either. And many of their shows would end in fights breaking out so typical for early punk bands. According to an interview with Alan Vega in 2002, the name Suicide was taken from a Ghost Rider comic with the title Satan Suicide. and the band names to describe society suicide, especially in America and more specifically in New York City. In 1977, they recorded and released their debut self-titled album, which features the song Frankie Teardrop. Frankie Teardrop is the sixth and longest track in the album, at 10 minutes and 26 seconds. It tells the story of a man named Frankie Teardrop, a 20-year-old husband and father working in a factory. However, his family is very poor and he can't make enough money to support his family. He often can't make it to work on time, and to make matters worse, he and his family are also getting evicted from their home. But Frankie can't make it Cause things are just too hard That seems like a really shitty and stressful way to live, and Frankie knows that, to which he becomes desperate. He becomes very desperate. And suddenly, Frankie just snaps. Frankie is so desperate. He's gonna kill his wife and kid. He grabs a gun, shoots his six month old child, and then shoots his wife. Shut, Shut up! up. <laughs> <laughs> Let's hear it for Frankie. Frankie realizes what he's just done, and he turns the gun on himself and pulls the trigger. Frankie with the gun to his head. I know it! Frankie's dead. However, the song doesn't end there, because we aren't even halfway through the song yet. The song begins to shift into a much more ominous tone as Frankie's soul is being sent to hell. Soon enough, Frankie's lying in hell, and we hear him screaming and burning as he suffers eternal damnation. Frankie's lying in hell. <laughs> the song then ends with a few final words that go, We're all Frankies. We're all lying in hell. We're all Frankies. We're all lying Get 
And that's basically the story inside Frankie Teardrop. Now, the lyrics themselves are disturbing enough, but what makes it even worse is the atmosphere this song gives off. The backing of the song is just a simple drum machine and keyboard riff, as well as a few extra electronic sounds here and there during when Frankie goes to hell. But it's the way it's put together that gives this song a very unnerving and stressful atmosphere. Alan Vega's vocals are very much the biggest thing that sticks out in this song. He keeps a very somber, whispery tone in his voice for most of the lyrics, but he surprises the listener with these high-pitched, blood-curdling screams. It's such a large switch in tone and volume that sometimes happen out of nowhere that can make the listener jump out of their seat. All of this put together makes for an extremely chilling and uncomfortable experience about a tale that's much more real than you think. The original title of the song was supposed to be Frankie Teardrop, The Detective Meets the Space Alien, but the narrative was changed when Vega read a newspaper story about a man who lost his factory job and then killed his wife, his kid, and then himself. Vega redirected the narrative to be about a 20-year-old's destruction of life, working obscene hours for not enough pay to support himself and his family, going through eviction, and eventually snapping. It's a concept that makes you think about how real this can actually be, especially when Vega says we're all Frankies, we're all lying in hell. And with millions of people, especially in America, struggling to make ends meet, it's only a matter of time before they snap just like Frankie. When this album was released, it had a pretty positive reception in the UK, but mixed feelings in the US. It failed to chart in both the UK and the US upon release, but Suicide was also still underground at that time so they weren't exactly well known yet. Despite the lack of popularity the self-titled album received, it is widely regarded, along with the band itself, as one of the biggest influences for hundreds of bands and artists, as well as influencing the creation of synth-pop, post-punk, industrial, noise, and many other genres. Some groups that were influenced by Suicide include Bauhaus, The Sisters of Mercy, Joy Division, Henry Rollins, Soft Cell, Depeche Mode, Ministry, Nine Inch Nails, Radiohead, The Dead Kennedys, R.E.M., A.F.I., Aphex Twin, Daft Punk, and Bruce fucking Springsteen, as well as many, many others. Bruce Springsteen was so inspired by this album, and especially Frankie Teardrop, that is the direct inspiration for the song State Trooper from the album Nebraska. It's just so weird to me that music like this... And this... That's me in the spot, like losing my... And this... <laughs> were inspired by this. <laughs> Needless to say, even though Frankie Teardrop is a disturbing song about real-life stress, murder, and hellfire, it still has inspired many groups and genres. I'm not even sure if words can describe how influential Suicide is, despite the fact that it's managed to stay relatively underground for all its years. Over the course of 46 years, Suicide would release a number of albums, live albums, EPs, and singles, and would do off and on tours until their eventual disbandment in 2016, when Alan Vega died in his sleep at the age of 78. Rest in peace, you absolute legend. It really goes to show that inspiration can come from anywhere, even in the darkest parts, and it's all thanks to one man. So, let's hear it for Frankie. Anyway, I think that's gonna do it for this disturbing song dissection, so thank you all so much for watching, and I'll see you next time.